you mentioned platforms before. So, you know, the thing about um, if there's any guidance you have on, on platforms to use, I think there's newsletter versus blog. Like I'd like to understand a little bit more about um, how you see those two things differently because like you're primarily, I, hear, I primarily hear you talking about newsletters. So great question. So first off, in terms of platforms, frankly, the whole, I usually just say newsletter because they're pretty big right now. Obviously the whole newsletter blog distinction is like 90% not real anyway, right? You can read, I mean, if you visit a Substack newsletter page, you read it like a blog. You can get a blog by email. Um, I personally, you know, I think on the margin, a newsletter gets a little bit more read with a little bit more regularity in the sense of like more people who read your newsletter will actually be subscribers versus people just visiting your blog every now and then. And in any individual blog post is probably a little bit more likely to like be forwarded around or quote unquote go viral than a newsletter article. But like that is on the margin. It's like a 5% difference. Um, I usually tell people at this point that to just get started with a sub stack only because it's like the absolute easiest way to get started. My only, the only, I, but, I, but I generally think any platform is fine. The only platform I actively recommend against is Medium. And the reason is that with Medium, you don't own your audience. So what I mean by that is that like on Substack, you can actually see the emails of the people who are receiving your Substack. And you and this is true for other newsletter platforms as well. And when you send an email, you know it's like going to those people. With Medium, it's much more like Facebook in the sense of like you publish something, it's sort of at the whims of their algorithm. And if someone like, you have no way to contact your likes or follows on Medium off Medium. So you're totally beholden to Medium. The upside is that it is easier for a piece to go viral on Medium, but like you don't wanna be basing your platform strategy around just hoping that you're gonna go viral. Um, the one reason to use Medium is if you don't wanna write regularly, Medium is nice because you can just go, like if you wanna write one thing on Substack, you have to create a Substack and then create a post. But on Medium, you can just like post something. That's why like every tech CEO who doesn't have a blog, but like one day wakes up and has something they want to say, like uh, Brian Armstrong at Coinbase publishing that piece about how they wouldn't engage with corporate politics, basically, like just post on Medium. And yeah, Jesse, I think it's a good point. I've seen a lot of people who use a blog or a Substack occasionally cross post on Medium and use that to pull people into their newsletter or their blog. So it can be useful as sort of a secondary distribution channel, but uh, I wouldn't make yourself totally at, at, at beholden to them. Can I, can I ask a real quick follow-up yeah. on the platform piece? Um, where do you see LinkedIn fitting into this? Ooh, yeah, that's a great question. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I it's similar to Medium in the sense that you don't, you know, own your audience in, in that way. Um, but it is different because um uh, but it's different because LinkedIn, because that isn't their primary business, there aren't, like, I think there are sort of sort of some real perverse incentives for Medium uh, about, like, really owning these writers and making it hard to leave Medium and stuff. Whereas, like, with LinkedIn, yeah, you don't own your audience, but it's, like, more of a side feature. Um, I would, what I would generally say is, if you want to write, you know, two to three to four paragraph things, and LinkedIn is just going to be the easiest, lowest friction place for you to do it, go for it. But longer term, you probably want to think about moving off of LinkedIn uh, because it's not really a good place to have. It doesn't really provide a permanent home for your writing, right? The upside is that people you're connected to on LinkedIn will see your writing. But if you just wanted to send someone like, oh, here's everything I wrote in the past six months, what do you send them? Like your LinkedIn feed? It's not, there's not really a good, you know, sort of place for that. I think what a lot of people do successfully is cross post on LinkedIn. So I cross post all my newsletters on, on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, but what you can do with LinkedIn is actually, you know, Twitter, I might just write one sentence and have the link on LinkedIn. You might actually be able, you could actually pull a whole excerpt, or even if you were writing like a three paragraph newsletter, you could even cross post the whole thing on LinkedIn and then be like, here's the Substack link for the permanent home for this. Um, you know, the other downside of LinkedIn is that it's harder for someone to share your post with someone who isn't on LinkedIn. Obviously most people are on LinkedIn, but still like, you know, like, I, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, but like, I don't ever check it, right? So like, if I wanted to send something, a piece of writing to a friend, I wouldn't want to send it to them on LinkedIn because I'd be like, they never look at these messages. Um, but again, I think with all of this platform advice and even, even on Medium, the most important thing is just to write. So if it's going to be way easier for you to just go on LinkedIn or even on Medium and just type something out and set up a Substack, like, just do that. 
I've never heard of an amazing writer who failed because they were on the wrong platform. You know, these differences all matter at the margin.